I have, I'm gonna introduce what SQLite is because I'm planning on doing some SQLite tutorials, and I also want a way to get myself to learn SQLite as well. So SQLite is an embedded SQL-driven database engine that implements both the database engine and its interfaces as a C slash C++ library. It's a single file, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but it's a .so in Unix, and it's a .dll in uh, Windows-based systems, which makes it really nice because that's all you need to actually get yourself up and running. D. Richard Hibb created it in 2000 from the ground up, no legacy code or anything like that. Um, it's all built up from scratch. SQLite is in the public domain, so if you want to edit it or whatever you have to do, you can do that. The goals of SQLite, so when HIP made this, he wanted it simple to administer, he wanted it simple to operate, he wanted it simple to use in a program, he also wanted it simple to maintain and customize. I think he accomplished all these things. And um, once we get into coding, you'll see that's a lot simpler than some of the other ones. You actually um, don't actually have to declare certain types, but you're able to. And it, it's actually a really nice database engine. The features and limitations. One of the features is its speed. Uh, it's a lot smaller and because it's not a client-server database engine. It's not anything huge. So it's actually 20 times faster than some of the other uh, database engines that are available. It's also portable. So since it's stored as a single file, you can port it to whatever system you want. And since the actual library is only one file and it's cross-platform, you can pretty much put it on anything you want. Uh, there's no external dependencies. Uh, it's self-contained in one file, like I was saying. It's cross-platform. Okay, as far as security is concerned, uh, it doesn't have a hardcore access control system like others may have. The op it just handles everything based at the operating system level. So if your user has write privileges, he can write to the database if you grant it through the operating system. Uh, the SQL implementation, it supports a large subset of the ANSI SQL 92 standard, but doesn't support all of it. So all the standard SQL stuff that you're used to seeing, you'll be able to do most of it. Customization, like I said, it's in the public domain, so it's highly customizable. It includes a very powerful mechanism for adding user-defined functions to the SQL command set. Custom functions can be written in many support languages and APIs. You can do Perl and Python, not just C slash C plus plus, although it is a library in C slash C plus plus, so you can use that as well. So the supported APIs, so you can do C slash C plus plus obviously because it's just one file. It's libsqlite.so on Linux and Unix based systems. And on Windows it's just a DLL, so it's SQLite.dll on Windows. In PHP, it's actually shipped with PHP 5. Ever since PHP 5 was created, SQLite was also shipped with it. Perl. You can actually access it through the DBI or the database interface module. You can also use DVD and do more intricate things than you can with DBI, but DBI is uh, pretty standard and it's easy to use. Others include TCL, so like really basic GUI type of things that you may want to do. You can use SQLite for You can use Python, you can use Ruby, you can use Java, you can use .NET, you can use Smalltalk. Uh, scalability is one of its limitations. So it's not as scalable and not as big as like Oracle or any of that stuff, but it's built to be simple and small and easy to use. Uh, the limitation size is probably only about two gig gigabytes but it works so it's not suited for network or client server applications because that's not what it's designed for or high volume websites or high concurrency or anything like that but it is pretty suited for basic websites embedded devices are great because it's small because it's not designed 
like other database engines that are huge and designed for enterprise uh, computing or whatever, or database storage. It's actually been ported to the Palm OS. Uh, it's good for an ad hoc file system. So the whole file does not have to be read into memory before specific elements can be read. So like if you're going to be using XML and using data structures or whatever and then handling it that way, that isn't going to be as productive because you're going to have to load all that stuff into memory, whereas this, you don't have to, you can just read what you need to into memory. And it's great for handling internal data manipulation. So if you have some type of data structure, rather than handling all that persistent storage or whatever you need to do to handle the individual data, you can actually just use SQLite and it's easy and fast. I think this is a good introduction before we actually start using it. I hope you enjoyed.